Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you, Bentley, for organizing this session, and thank you all for uh, being here. Uh, I'm going to share my experience with the, uh, the Bentley uh, B-Graph peripherals tent uh, during FIVAR. Those are my uh, disclosures. And um, you have to understand that FIVAR has evolved uh, over the year, and this is a really uh, very nicely illustrated in uh, Gustavo's book that you should all have in your uh, library, showing that we actually started uh, a couple of years ago using two renal fenestrated uh, endograph for juxta uh, renal aneurysm, and we moved to three, and now almost uh, routinely uh, implanting four uh, vessel fenestrated endograft. And why did we do that? Is because uh, when you look at the anatomy of those cases with juxta renal aneurysm, most of them have have a posterior bulge at the just be uh, behind the, uh, the SMA, and if you don't get a proximal sealing zone above in healthy uh, dis descending thoracic aorta, uh, there's a high risk of um, proximal type 1 uh, endoleco migration uh, during follow-up. So moving to those uh, four vessel fenestrated in the graft, uh, we had to, to change our, our practice, uh, got the graft up on one side, and uh, on the other side we had to access uh, all uh, target vessel, but as you can imagine, it's not always easy to get four, seven French sheaths. Uh, through uh, one side to access uh, both renals and both visceral. So we, we changed the practice going with two uh, renal sheaves and then two balloons. And once the uh, renal stand had been implanted, we would replace the balloon by sheaves. But uh, we actually moved to using a preloaded system. Uh, so the, the good thing about that is you have access to the renal arteries from the side you insert the, the endograph and the sheaves go directly uh, towards the, um, uh, the fenestration. And on the other side, you only need to access uh, the two visceral uh, vessel. And this is uh, an example. The nice thing about this preloaded system is you have a stable platform at the level of the fenestration, then you can access uh, your renal artery. And same patient, lateral view, and now we're coming from the other groin and getting access uh, to uh, the, the SMA. Now, moving to those preloaded catheter, uh, there was one issue, is that uh, those, uh, uh, those uh, delivery systems are only compatible with six French uh, sheaths. And the Bentley are actually the only bridging stent uh, that have diameters uh, uh, larger than six and length uh, longer than 22 that are compatible uh, with uh, uh, those six French uh, sheaths. So this is when we started using them, and we started actually with the second generation big raft peripheral stent. Second generation had uh, larger uh, stent connectors and had a thicker uh, PTFE uh, coverage. Uh, it went from 100 micron to 200 micron. And you can see how the stent uh, is precise uh, in delivery, and you can see a third six millimeter stent with a, a nine millimeter balloon, and this is exactly what we're obtaining uh, during uh, our cases. And this is a cone beam CT of a four vessel fenestrated case uh, performed with four uh, Bentley peripheral, a cone beam CT performed at the end of the procedure, and a discharge uh, CT a couple of days uh, later. Now, another uh, specific issue about the uh, Bentley is that it comes in large diameters and short length, which is also the, the only platform uh, to provide that. And it's very interesting for visceral arteries that often are quite large with a short trunk, meaning uh, an early division, uh, very, um, uh, very difficult to, to deal with, with longer stents. And this is an example of a patient. And what you can see here is that the access uh, to the select nose is not always very easy, but now because we have a six French uh, uh, stent, six French compatible eight millimeter stent, we can actually use a six French sheath to go into this um, quite challenging uh, select trunk. Then you can see the eight millimeter uh, stent tracks really easily uh, through the six French sheath uh, delivery of the stent. Part of the stent, obviously, is inside the aortic lumen. Uh, and then uh, the next uh, video will show you flaring of the stent. And you can see there was quite a, a marked arc uh, ligament here. And we uh, managed to open it nicely with this uh, uh, big raft uh, stent without covering uh, the bifurcation of uh, the CDEC trunk. Now, the various steps of implanting the, uh, this uh, fenestrated, uh, um, this bridging stent in the fenestrated case are first positioning accurately the stent and then uh, ballooning uh, uh, the stent, flaring the distal, uh, the, the aortic portion of the stent to get um, a perfect rivet at the, uh, at the origin of the fenestration to make sure uh, you have a, a good seal. And I'm going to show you in, in this video uh, exactly how we, we manage that. And you can see the stent is in position here. I'm retrieving the six French sheath. I'm now going to inflate 
where actually it's, uh, Dr. Godric is going to inflate uh, uh, the balloon. And you can see that I'm advancing uh, my sheath against the balloon while he's deflating. And so the, the sheath actually just jumps uh, into the renal artery very uh, easily here, very smoothly. And then I'm advancing uh, the flaring balloon, which I think here is a nine by two. And you see the balloon is advanced just distal to the uh, fenestration. And again, it's a team approach. Uh, Dr. Godric is inflating uh, the balloon, and I'm, uh, once it's slightly um, open, I'm actually getting some pressure on the shaft to, to have a nice flare from top to bottom. And see what I'm doing here? I'm actually putting some tension on the shaft of the, uh, of the balloon and advancing my six French sheath against the balloon prior to deflating the balloon. So when it deflates, again, by putting some small tension on the shaft, uh, you actually manage to easily uh, get the, uh, the, um, the sheath to, to uh, advance inside uh, the target vessel. So if you do that, then you should not have any issue. This is uh, the early experience uh, in Lille. Uh, we we uh, actually are going to submit this uh, 101st B graft stent implanted in 39 uh, patients, uh, half uh, in the renal arteries, half in the visceral arteries. And we looked at all issues that can uh, happen during follow-up uh, uh, with those renal fenestrations. And the, uh, we had only one case where both renals occluded. This patient had a, a dissection on one side and a kidney hematoma on, on the other side. This was a, a patient with a shaggy aorta, quite a, a difficult case. So in this patient, we lost both renals uh, quite soon. But for the 38 other patients, uh, at one year, uh, we have uh, no issues, no type 3 endoleak, no occlusion, um, and so a, a very favorable uh, outcome. Now, uh, this is just a transition to Eric Verhoeven's talk. So I told you that we've used the B-graph peripheral for uh, bridging our fenestration, and he's going to talk now about the new generation, the B-graph plus, that has been developed for branches, and I really want to emphasize that uh, we, uh, have, uh, we need both platforms, one for the fenestrations and uh, one uh, for uh, the branches. And you can see here in this patient, we use free graph, free B graph peripheral for the fenestration and one B graph plus uh, for a branch uh, to the select chunk. And you can see uh, here uh, a nice result and the cone beam CT uh, showing nicely the free peripheral and the free fenestration and the B graph plus uh, through the, uh, uh, the branch. Uh, post-op CT, and this patient had a, quite a, a sharp, uh, tight arc ligament, and with the B graft uh, plus, we managed to open it uh, nicely, you can see on this uh, reconstruction. So I'm going to conclude by saying that it's a, a very interesting platform uh, for those uh, of you who are using uh, routinely uh, FIVAR, uh, four-vessel uh, FIVAR. It's a low-profile, six-French compatible, uh, flexible, uh, very precise, uh, easy to track through uh, quite challenging anatomies, and we have ideal length uh, for this type of uh, procedure, 27, 28 is really uh, uh, what we need. And so far at, at one year, we have uh, very favorable outcomes. Thank you for your attention.